Welcome one and all to another Realflow tutorial where we're going to be taking a look at how to use Realflow with Cinema 4D Release 13. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to be making today. So if we preview this you can see we have this liquid being poured over the text like so. And we're not going to be doing any lighting or texturing in today's lesson. This is purely based on the simulation and also Cinema 4D integration so we're not going to be doing any lighting or texturing today. So let's go ahead and get started in Cinema. That's a good place to start. So there's one thing that I just want to qu quickly run over before we get started and that is the Realflow plugins. You want to make sure you have your Realflow plugins installed in your Cinema plugins folder and this allows us to export objects to Realflow and then also, it allows us to import meshes into Cinema from Realflow. So, just a side note, make sure you have your plugins installed. So, I have this scene. I have a plane and a mo text. And it's also important that you have a plane and not a floor because you want something that has a fall off to it. Because if you know a floor, a floor goes on for infinity and that's not good with real flow so you want to make sure you use a plane with real flow and also I have a mo text um, the font is val for anyone that's wondering val um, the depth is 150 and that's about it but we just want to make our mo text into a polygon object and we can do that by hitting C on the keyboard and then right clicking select children hit C again and then we're going to select children again and connect objects and delete and then that just creates just a single polygon object like so and that allows us to export it into Realflow and we can delete these tags we don't need those anymore now we have our cinema scene ready to go and now we're ready to export to Realflow. So you want to come up to your plugins, Realflow, and Realflow SD Exporter. So what we want to do here is choose a destination to save our SD file to. And I'm going to save it in my Realflow tutorial folder. And I'm just going to call this Realflow Text underscore SD and the end frame we want it to be 200 because that's the default frame of Realflow and we're just going to set our cinema time to 200 frames as well and you see our objects we have our mo text and our plane if you just want to add one or two of them you can individually add them or you can just select add all and that's going to add all the objects and then just hit export and you're ready to go so let's head on into Realflow and I'm just going to delete these and we'll start afresh so now we have our SD file exported from Cinema we're ready to import that into Realflow now and if we come up to the top toolbar and come up to import import objects and we navigate to our Realflow tutorial folder and then select our SD, click open and now you can see we have our real flow text and our plain object all ready to go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add Gravitor. You want to come up to your daemon tab and select Gravitor and we're also going to need a emitter so if I select emitter you can choose any emitter you want but I'm going to choose a square emitter and if I hit one on the keyboard that's going to allow us to see the top view two is going to be the front three is the side and four is our normal perspective view so I'm just going to come to the front view and hit W and that allows us to move the emitter and I'm just going to move the emitter not too far up just around there like so and I'm also going to move it just to where it starts on the text like so 
and I'm going to move to zero on the timeline and you want to make sure your emitter is selected come over to the node parameters and the node and then select position and we're going to right click on the position and we're going to add a keyframe so it's position add key and then we're going to move to maybe frame 195 and we're going to move this emitter right over there like so just so it covers the text and then we're going to right click position again add key and you can see now we have that animation of the emitter so that's all good if we come back into our perspective view and we're ready to start playing with the settings so if you select your emitter the resolution I'm going to set the resolution to maybe 3 now if I'm doing this for maybe my own project where I've got some time to spare I might bump that up to 10, 20, maybe even 30, it depends but it will increase your simulation time so be aware of that but I'm just using 3 just so it's nice and fast for this tutorial the next setting we're going to change is viscosity and we're going to change that to 5 and that's basically the thickness of it the speed, speeds at 2 that's fine the V random we want to set that to 0.5 so it just gives it a little bit of randomness and so it's not coming out in a grid formation and that's pretty much it for the moment so if I just select one and then that allows us to see the top view what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard that's gonna allow us to scale the emitter and I'm just gonna scale it like so and just thin it out a little bit like so if we come back to our perspective view now and we come down to simulate and we hit simulate what that's going to do that's going to go through each frame and simulate all the particles from the emitter so bear in mind this may take a little while depending on your resolution and your machine so I'm just going to pause it and we'll come back when it's finished simulating okay we're back and I've let it simulate up to frame 50 but there was something I actually forgot to do and that is if we select our plane that we imported from cinema you can see we have particle fluid interaction so this is bounce, sticky, particle friction all that good stuff so what we need to do we need to actually add some friction to the plane object and also our mo text as well so on the plane object you want to change the particle friction to 0.5 and also you want to come up to your mo text and change the particle fi friction to 0.5 as well and if we go back and hit simulate now what we're going to get we're going to get a lot more friction from the floor and the text objects so I'm just going to pause it and we'll come back when it's finished simulating okay we're back and you can see it took just over five minutes to simulate this and you can see the changes that adding friction has made makes it look a whole lot nicer so now we're ready to start meshing and then after that we'll be ready to import into cinema so let's go ahead and get started with the meshes so if you come up here to your icons and select your mesh tab here and we're going to select particle mesh render kit and then what that's going to do that's going to automatically place our emitter inside the the particle mesh and a few changes to the settings that we need to change are the polygon size, we want the polygon size to be 0 0.04 and that's going to make the mesh just look that little bit nicer 
but it will take a little bit longer to simulate and all that good stuff. Um, the next one is filter. We want to turn filter on and we want to turn relaxation to 0 0.7 and we want to keep the steps at 1 and that's pretty much pretty much good to go and if we just if we just mesh this one frame so you come down to the bottom right hand corner and you can see we have our simulate reset and then the next button along is build mesh and that's just going to build just a single mesh for whatever frame you're on so if we just hit that and you want to make sure that you have your mesh selected when you want to build your mesh and you can see if we just hit zero that's going to turn the screen to smooth shading and that allows us to quickly view that looks pretty good to me so now we're ready to simulate the meshes so if we come back to frame zero and it's important to be on frame zero when you start the meshes select our mesh and just underneath the emitter tab is the build meshes so once you've selected that that's going to go through all 200 frames and build the meshes so once that's done we'll be ready to open up cinema and import that into cinema so this may take a little while once again depending on your machine and the settings that you're using so what I'm going to do I'm going to go make a coffer if you want to do the time that's cool and uh, we'll come back when it's finished meshing and then we'll get into cinema so I'll see you very soon okay we're back the meshing's done I've got my coffee and we're ready to go so you can see it took just over six minutes to simulate up to frame 185 I stopped it there because we don't really need any more than that and so now we're ready to head back into cinema and you want to come up to your plugins Railflow plugins and Railflow mesh importer and then you want to come up to the setup of the importer then the file path and then what we want to do we want to navigate to our Railflow tutorial folder and meshes and here we have a bunch of zipped files with all our meshes in Bear in mind if you do have one or more meshes in your scene you'll have to go down and make sure you select the right mesh so it's kind of like a sequence, an image sequence of meshes. That's the kind of way it works so you just want to select the first mesh and then select open and that's all good end frame 188 that's where it got to and if we scrub through the cinema timeline now can see we have our real flow mesh can all liquidy there and that's all good and then all that's left to do is if you want to texture it or light it or set up your scene so it looks nice and sexy I'll leave that up to you so that pretty much wraps it up for today's tutorial on how to use Cinema 4D with Realflow. Really hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. Please don't forget to favourite the video, it really helps me out. So make sure to stay tuned for loads more Cinema and Realflow tutorials. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you again very soon in another video.